Well, today I'm finally getting around to doing something I've been meaning to do for the last six or seven years, and that is to show some results on what I think is the very best general purpose blade that you can purchase. So when you see the results, I think you might agree with me. So let me show you what I've got. So what triggered me to show you this blade is I was over at Steve. Steve is an amazing woodworker uh, and he's got a great shop and maybe we'll get to do a tour of his shop one of these days. I think you'll enjoy it. Anyway, he had one of these blades in his table saw and I, when I looked at it, I recognized it because it, it has a, a unique look to it. And I thought, oh, it's one of these things that I've wanted to do for years and years. I need to go home and order up one of these blades, which is exactly what I did. I tried it out and I was as impressed with it as what I've heard other people talk about. So today I'm going to show you the details of this blade. So the blade I'm talking about today is something called the Freud Fusion Blade and they refer to it as the next generation general purpose blade. Now typically general purpose blades are sort of average, um, you know, they kind of do a pretty good job of ripping and cross cutting, but this one does an outstanding job of both ripping and cross cutting. It is equal to some of the best cross cutting and rips, ripping blades that I've seen. Now some of the things that make a difference with that are this blade is made out of German steel and it's all laser cut. All of these things, this little upside down um, cut in here, um, that's an expansion slot. These ripples in here are anti-vibration. All of that goes in to making a high quality blade. Now how can you tell um, a blade that's not high quality? Well, a blade that's not high quality is what we call a stamp blade. And literally, uh, they're made by, by pushing down on a sheet of steel with a template and you end up with something like this. Now, how do you know that this is a stamp blade? Very easily, because you can see that the expansion slot here is just a, it's, it's just what I said, it's just a slot that comes down and it's got a circle in. That's a, a, a pure indicator that this is a stamped blade. A laser cut blade, you've got these very fine cuts in there. Now, stamp blades usually are very inexpensive and one of the problems with stamp blades, of course, is in the stamping, there's a chance that this metal somewhere got a little bit warped, that it's not absolutely flat. And that's why laser cutting is a better system to go. But let me tell you, let me show you about the teeth on this for a second. So what really makes a difference with this blade is the design of the teeth. And there was a ton of engineering that went into this. And if you look at this blade, it's called what they call an uh, alternating top bevel, ATB for short. And if you look at these teeth, you'll notice that this one here has an angle that goes like that. The one in front of it has an angle that goes the other way. And the purpose of that is to get a special cut. Now there's also the degrees and the angles that they make on this, which I'm not going to go into. But the other thing that makes a big difference on this blade is that the the sides of these teeth here are called cheeks and when you grind when you put the braise the carbide to the to the blade you have to grind the sides of that carbide and usually it's ground sort of parallel to the blade but in this case they didn't do that the carbide is actually ground um, wider at the beginning of the tooth and narrower so it, it has a sort of a, an angle that goes like this on each side there's a, a sort of a front and a back angle that sort of s slims towards the back and what that means those teeth will slice into the wood much more effectively as you'll see in a few minutes uh, and that's that's the sort of the the quick overview of what makes this blade so special. So this blade is not for everybody uh, and I'll be the first one to admit that. Um, the people that are interested in this are people that are doing what they consider to be serious woodworking. They're critical about their 
uh, table saw cuts. They want their blade cuts to be crisp and sharp and, and very little or no tear out. That's the kind of person that's interested in this. And this is not an inexpensive blade. That's the other thing. But what does it replace? And that's what's key. And in my testing already that I've had a look at it, it replaces, in my case, it replaces one of my favorite blades, which is what I call a glue line or what Freud calls a glue line rip. Um, and it does an absolute remarkable job of ripping wood, absolutely straight and clear and, and no tear out, um, a super job. But this blade, I just checked on Amazon, the price on this blade is like $65. Um, but again, if you want good quality blades, you need to pay a bit more. The other thing that it replaces is this blade, which in my case, this is a thin curve, but a 90 tooth cross cutting blade. Again, a remarkable blade, uh, straight cuts, clean, um, no tear out, no chipping. Um, and these are the two blades that I use most of all when I'm using when I'm making anything, doing any fine woodworking because I want good clean cuts. This single blade, by the way, that blade as well, um, depending on whether you get a thin curve or a full curve, you'll pay at least another $65. I just checked these on Amazon there around that price. Um, and this blade here, a thin curve, I just looked as like $75 and a full curve is $85. So. Uh, you know, they're not horrible prices, but you know, they're not inexpensive blades either. So that's sort of what you're looking at. Now, I'm going to do some testing now and show you what this, what you can get when you use this blade. Now, before I get started, a little bit of housekeeping because we have so many new people today. Um, every month I get more and more new subscribers and viewers. Um, the first thing, Whenever you're changing blades, I've already put the, the blade in here, but whenever you're changing blades, uh, never ever lay your saw blade on a steel deck. And the reason for that is carbide is like a crystal. And if you strike it even just a little bit with steel, it can chip that carbide tooth, chip that blade. And when that happens, especially if you're laying it on a table saw, you never know whether you've compromised any of the other teeth. You can't see cracks in there. And the problem with that is when you put that blade in and start spinning it up to speed and there's a little un unforeseen crack in there um, that can spin off carbide and I've heard of people that have been hit in the face uh, with carbide and it actually embeds in in the skin so um, not something you want to toy with so that's the first thing the second thing is that um, when we're cutting wood we always always I don't care what table saw you're using we always have the blade about a half tooth above the thickness of the material. Now my material is varying a little bit. Um, it's not the same thickness. This is, uh, this is double-sided melamine. We always use this for testing blades because it's like a paint on both sides. So we get to see very clearly any tear out on a table saw is going to come on the back side. So we keep the blade, I'm going to keep the blade at the same height, just barely above the material. We do that for a better cut and we also do it for safety. So every saw blade, every material that you're cutting, uh, you want to be about a half tooth at the most above the material that you're cutting. The other two materials that I'm going to cut is some red oak, and I've got some pine here, and we'll have a look at all of those. Oh, and I'm also going to cross cut some oak as well. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our results here. Now you can see that this is the top of the melamine that I cut. And if you look close, you can see that there's, yes, there's a line there. And we typically want to see that. But when I put a little bit of pressure on it, it all but disappears. But the top of the, of the wood, of course, is going to be where the best cut is. So here's where the critical difference is. And if we put a little bit of pressure on that, you can see that there is virtually no chip out. There is one little one way down there in front of my finger. That's the only chip out on that whole length 
of melamine. That is remarkable that a blade can do that well on that piece of wood. Okay, and here's the oak. And there you can see that's the top. So we're looking first of all at the top. But when you look at that, unless I move that, you, it's pretty hard to even see the cut. You can, if you look closely, there's a very fine line there. But when we flip it over, and this is where the worst of the cut is going to be. And again, it's very hard to see where that cut is. It's just a, a remarkable straight flat um, no tear out cut and that's what we want to see and the other thing is when you see this wood coming together like that um, you'll see a little bit of burning in there and that that's typical on on oak we see that quite often on oak um, but when you see wood that goes together like that that means that you don't even have to put this wood through a joint or it's that you know it's that flat and even you could glue if that was two boards you could actually glue those up right just the way they are there's the pine and there's the top of the pine and again nice clean cut all the way along I put a little bit of pressure on there and that line all but disappears in fact some of it does disappear up here depending on the grain flip the back side and the same thing um, good clean cut all the way along and I put a little bit of pressure on there as if you were gluing it um, and there's a little bit um, where the knot is in there but if you go further down here you can see there's with the natural wood there you can't even see where the line is there and all right so there's the cross cutting remember this blade th this is a combination blade so you can do cross cutting and ripping with the same blade you don't even have to swap out blades and there's the top and you can see that that's a nice clean cut on the top and the underside is where we would expect to see tear out and there is there is literally no tear out there you have to actually move that wood to see where the cut was and I put a little bit of pressure on there the woods moving a bit but uh, you can see that's a nice clean cut all the way through. Well that concludes my video for today and as I said at the outset the fusion blade is not the blade for everybody. Uh, it's a blade for people that are more serious about their woodworking in terms of the cuts and the, the outcomes that they're looking for and, and somebody who doesn't want to be changing blades all the time and still get really good quality cuts whether you're ripping or cross cutting uh, and that might be something that you want to look at. I did a video uh, quite a number of years ago now on how to select blades and I still get people asking me you know how do I know what blade to select for my table saw. I'll put that video up there for those of you who have questions like that and want to know more about table saw blades you can have a look at that. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.